Hi everyone, the macro objective for growth is for growth to be strong, sustained and sustainable. If we were to map that on a diagram, it would look something like this. We have real GDP on the y-axis now and we're looking at growth, real GDP over time, time on the x-axis. And that line there represents strong and sustained economic growth, continuous economic growth in a lovely smooth upward sloping manner. However, reality differs very much from this. In reality, actual growth looks more like this. There are times where it increases, but also times where it falls and increases and falls and increases and falls. That's what actual growth really looks like in an economy. And we can label these lines now. So this squiggly one is our actual growth line, whereas the smooth upward sloping one is our trend rate of growth. So we can call that our trend growth. But we can also call that our potential growth. The two terms are synonymous here. So trend growth, potential growth mean exactly the same thing in this case. So we can see that actual growth is rising and then falling and then rising again and then falling. It's not smooth and upward sloping as we would like. And that is the economic cycle, also known as the business cycle, fluctuations in GDP. But what we can see is that the actual growth line, even though it's fluctuating up and down, up and down, over time, it's still rising. So we're still getting increases in growth over a given period of time, just not nice and smooth and consistent like we would, like we would hope for given our objective of growth. What we can also show are the four different phases, the four different stages of the economic cycle using this diagram. So when actual growth is at its peak, we can call that a boom. So that's when growth is rampant and very strong. You can see greater than trend. That is a booming economy. When growth starts to fall from a boom, we can call that a slowdown or we can call it a recession. A recession is a technical term in economics defined as two successive quarters of negative growth. So break down the year into four quarters, January to March, April to June, July to September, October to December. Two successive quarters of negative growth, shrinking economy, is defined as a recession here. Okay, so that's when growth is falling, is negative. When we hit the worst position from a recession, that's known as the trough. So the lowest points of the actual growth line is a trough. And then when things start to get better in the economy, that's a recovery. An economic recovery. So they are the four different stages of the economic cycle. What we can also show on this diagram is the concept of output gaps. We've learned output gaps already and it's very clear to see them on this diagram. So an actual growth is greater than our potential growth. So here, for example, we have a positive output gap. And when actual growth is less than potential growth, so for example, this territory, we have a negative output gap. So now let's see what the different characteristics are of these various stages of the economic cycle. In a boom, growth is going to be rampant with actual growth likely to be beyond potential growth with a positive output gap in the economy. And with that, firms are going to be producing a lot. You can imagine there being high construction activity, high manufacturing activity. Firms are producing a huge amount of goods and services and selling them easily with high profits. To produce that output, they need to employ workers. So unemployment is likely to be very low. Consumer confidence and business confidence will be high because the economy is doing so well. That's going to drive consumer spending and businesses. It's going to drive them to invest in capital. If consumers are earning high, they're going to be sucking in imports, demanding goods and services from abroad, imports into the country. The government's going to be doing well with higher tax revenues coming in from income tax, from corporation tax, from VAT, from tariffs. All these revenues will be increasing. But there is likely to be the side effect of demand upon inflation, especially if growth is occurring beyond potential. In a recession and in a trough, the economy is doing really badly. Remember the definition of recession? Two successive quarters of negative growth. So if the economy is doing poorly, we're basically going to see the opposite of what we get in a boom. Declining AD, actual growth is going to be lower than potential growth. That's a negative output gap, as the diagram clearly shows. And with that, there is going to be higher unemployment. Firms getting rid of workers in order to maintain profit margins. Less demand for labor because there is less demand for goods and services generally. With that, there's going to be a sharp fall in consumer confidence and in business confidence. And that means less consumer spending. It means less investment. With that, there's going to be less construction going on, less manufacturing sector activity taking place. Um, there's going to be a fall in house prices. 
all bad news, all bad news in the economy. Firms though, in order to try and maintain profit margins, to try and maintain high revenues, will be destocking. They won't be producing more. They'll be getting rid of their stocks and trying to sell their stocks. And also they'll be discounting their prices. Clear signs that the economy is struggling and consumers are not spending. Already mentioned the fall in the house prices and construction activity because of a fall in consumer confidence, but also because of a fall in investment. So firms are not expanding their factories. They're not looking to build skyscrapers. We can expect a lower demand pull inflation, naturally, as there is lower demand, lower AD in the economy. We can expect loose macro policy, things like lower interest rates, things like maybe higher government spending, lower taxation, to try and stimulate the economy and get AD up, try and get out of the trough, get out of the recession, but also because incomes are low, low demand for imports. So essentially the opposite of what we see in a boom. Recovery is interesting. When do economists know, when do people know, when do politicians know that the economy is healing, that the economy is getting better? What are the green shoots of recovery? Well, these are the key things that we would witness in a recovery. Consumer confidence recovering, increasing, willingness to spend, especially on expensive items like houses and cars. You see a pickup in those markets. Also, businesses feeling more confident. And that means we can expect more investment. Businesses expanding a little bit more. Uh, buying in new machinery, upgrading their machinery, looking to expand their factory. That's a good sign of recovery. Also an increase in construction that comes again from investment, but also consumer spending on renovating their houses, expanding their houses, etc. But also loose policy still to try and prevent the economy going back into recession. So these are some of the key characteristics of the four different phases of the economic cycle. What's maybe more interesting though, is why are there fluctuations in actual growth? Well, the simple answer is shocks. Things can happen in the economy that nobody can foresee, nobody can predict. Shocks. And that's why we don't get this lovely, smooth, upward sloping growth line. We get this fluctuating actual growth line. Shocks. Things happen in the economy which are bad. No one expects them. And those bad things can happen on the demand side or they can happen on the supply side. When I say demand side, I mean shocks to aggregate demand. Factors that end up reducing AD that nobody can predict. Let's look at a few. Maybe a sudden increase in interest rates that suddenly happens. No one expected that to happen and bam, recession is the end result. We see growth falling. Maybe we see a sudden cut in government spending. Right? If that happened, then bam, that can take an economy into a recession. Maybe a sudden strengthening of the exchange rate, which means less net exports. But also maybe a sudden housing market crash, which massively affects consumption. Maybe it's a sudden banking sector crisis or financial market crash, like we saw in 2009, 2010, which again can plummet the economy into a recession with less consumption taking place, less investment taking place. So we have a lot of these demand side factors, things that can suddenly shock the economy. What about taxation rates? Higher income tax, higher corporation tax. Suddenly people couldn't predict that happening. Again, could shock the economy into a recession. But also we can have shocks on the supply side, maybe shocks that affect LRAS, like natural disasters, like wars. But also we can see shocks to SRAS, factors that can shift SRAS left that people could not predict. For example, a sudden increase in the price of raw materials. For example, a sudden increase in wages. For example, a sudden increase in business taxes like VAT. Or for example, a sudden weakening of the exchange rate, which makes imports of raw materials more expensive. Those kind of factors can shock the economy and drive us into a recession. But the key is that they are shocks. They can't be predicted. And when they happen, bam, the economy suffers, it dies. And that explains why we get these recessions and why we get fluctuations in GDP, which cause the economic cycle, the business cycle to occur. So there you go. That's the economic cycle for you. Everything you need to know. Fascinating stuff. Stay tuned for the next video as we look at the costs and benefits of growth. See you then, guys.